Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Andy Thao. I work for OCHA. I'm going to introduce our session, Breaking Barriers for the Common Good, uh, Open Data and Shared Risk Analysis in Support of Multilateral Action. Um, now, what this is really about is how we can make the best use of all the information that there is out there to be better at um, crisis prevention and crisis preparedness. Um, let me start a little bit of background. Uh, as I'm sure all of you know, in 2012, there was a major food security crisis in the Sahel. Um, it affected 18 million people um, across nine countries. Um, while responding to the immediate needs, um, the government uh, aid agencies and donors in the region uh, were determined to find a new way of working. So they wanted to get better at um, preventing and managing future crises. And they started organizing their work around the concepts of risk and resilience. And this involved, number one, developing a shared understanding of risk, and number two, breaking down the institutional barriers between uh, emergency and development actors. Now, in 2016, we can see some of these ideas coming to uh, technical maturity. So last month, um, organizations from across that region met to assess progress on um, common approaches to risk analysis, and they decided that they would recommend systematically using three tools to measure risk across the region. These were the Cadre Harmonize informed Sahel model and the OECD um, resilient systems analysis, underpinned by uh, data from the humanitarian data exchange platform, and they would use these to support uh, crisis, um, planning for crisis prevention and management across the region. So you probably may have never heard of these tools, but they've got some very important features. One, they're all based on open data, and two, they all involve some collaborative process for understanding risk and determining how to build resilience. So we can conclude from this that um, open data and shared risk analysis are critical components of this new way of doing business for the multilateral system in the Sahel and, in fact, elsewhere. Um, and this is what we're going to discuss in the session. These are some of the pieces. Um, risk information is being generated by, like never before, but it's not always available or, or usable for decision makers. Um, open data um, can help us um, have more access to risk information, and particularly these open data initiatives by governments like Kenya and Ghana and other platforms like, like HDX are critical in providing that information, but it has to be uh, lead to usable analysis and shared analysis. So that's analysis that we are doing together and using um, independently. Initiatives like INFORM and the Resilient Systems Analysis are basically a mechanism for uh, undertaking this shared analysis, and that can then be used in the planning processes of individual organizations or um, jointly. One of the challenges we do face is overcoming uh, reluctance of organizations to participate, participate in these shared processes because they worry there may be um, some funding implications if the results don't match their programmatic intentions. So to do this, um, we're going to have five presentations. We'll have two case studies from Sri Lanka and Malawi, looking at the, some government open data initiatives there. Then. Um, Vivian Jeopardy from the GFDRR Innovation Lab will talk to us about their Open Data for Resilience initiative um, and uh, some of the principles and policies that they've uh, developed. Luke Cayley from Start Network will talk to us about some of the processes for um, shared analysis that they're using uh, in this NGO consortium with the focus on preparedness. And then lastly, um, I'm going to talk about um, the INFORM initiative and some of the lessons we've learned around uh, creating a, a space for that open and shared um, risk analysis. So thank you very much. Um, we hope to see you tomorrow. Um, there'll be plenty of time for discussion, and um, we'll examine some of these issues and whether, in fact, these ideas can contribute to a better way of working in the multilateral system. Thank you.